Hi, I'm Natalie of So Hungry Hippie, and today's Sunday Skill Builder is all about machines. Now, I just want to preface that I'm not an expert seeing a sewing machine seller or anything like that, but I'm just going to walk you through three different machines that I use on a consistent basis. I think it is a great idea to go to your local sewing machine shop, make a relationship, take the time to learn about the different models, ask if you can test drive, tell them what you foresee yourself sewing and doing on the machine, and then they can guide you. If you're in the Wisconsin area, I know of a few local shops I can steer you to. Other than that, it's really on you to make sure that you're getting the most out of your experience. And I know it can be intimidating, but it is so worth it to go into your local shop and really talk to them about what you need because then you're gonna be so happy with what you get, okay? So first up, I am going to show you all about my Bernina 1008. It is the machine that after, what would you say, Ramel, about three months of sewing on a different model and struggling like a major struggle bus, and finally I broke it, <laughs> we went to a shop in England at the time we were stationed in England, and we bought me a refurbished Bernina 1008. So for I'm, um, for my birthday, right? It was very expensive for us at the time. It was a big investment. But here's the thing. I knew we weren't going to go wrong because number one, I talked to that guy. I told him, I need to sew layers. I see myself making lots of bags. I need it to handle foam. I need it to handle canvas, denim, pleathers, you name it. And he immediately said, I've got the machine for you. I know which one you need. Had I not explained all that, I could have ended up with a different model that wasn't for me. So let's get into it. This is my 1008. This is another uh, machine that we finally had to purchase because I, I did have the British version with a different motor. And Ramel is so smart, he was able to actually change out the motor. And let me tell you about that a little bit. Because this is a mechanical machine, if this machine were to break on you, it's going to be the motor, which is easily changed. How much was that replacement motor, Ramel? Uh, I want to say it was, it was around 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Oh, my gosh. So he was able to change out my motor because the current, the electrical current, voltage. the voltage, sorry, <laughs> voltage in the U.S. is different than in the U.K. So we changed out the motor, and I was good to go. Yeah. On a mechanical machine... What is so great about it is you control all the variables. And what I mean by that is with a dial, you change your tension. With a dial, you change your needle position. With a dial, you change your stitch length. With a dial, you can switch out your stitches. I'll walk through that slower in a second. But really important there is nothing is left to the computer or the motherboard. And Ramel can vouch for me on this. I do have a computerized machine I'm going to show you that I use. But with a mechanical, you're in charge. And a lot of times with non-computerized machines, it means you can sit and immediately start using your machine, even if it's new to you. You play around with it, you tinker with it, and you realize, oh, this dial does this, and this dial does this, and it's not complicated. I really love that. That's super important to me. I cannot hold in my mind all the different things that a computerized machine often does, okay? So that's important to me. Also, what's important to me is this baby's heavy. What do you think this is, Ramel? 20 pounds? Uh, more or less, yeah. More or less, 20 pounds. It's all metal. There's no plastic part on this machine. Maybe the knobs, I don't know. Back. Huh, the, the back? Well, on the website, it says this machine is all aluminum. 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 <laughs> I'm British. I'm British. Oh, dear. Uh, so what that means is you've got a nice, heavy, sturdy work spot. And when you're sewing uh, faux leathers and different kinds of heavy materials, that's super important. You don't want that machine to be scooting around on you and shifting and moving. 
Okay, I'm gonna head back to the machine now. This 1008 has 17 stitch options and they're all up here, okay? So with turning my knob to green or red, it changes either to green or red. And then this lever is what I'm choosing the stitches on. Yeah, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit on that. Awesome, yes. So as you can see, there's no codes to remember. I just simply move this leather lever. And if I'm down here at the bottom on my dial as green, then I'm gonna get these stitches and I would just move this. And if I'm my lever at the bottom is turned to red, then this lever is controlling the red. Okay, so it's very, very easy to pick different stitches. And also with that, uh, I will say 99% of the time I'm using a straight stitch, okay? I have tried out all these different stitches and they work beautifully. Uh, I will use the zigzag stitch, especially when I'm garment sewing and I don't want to mess with my serger. Or I have also used the blanket stitch and some decorative applique stitches on here as well. But that's like 1% of my sewing, honestly. The majority of the time is the straight stitch. And so over here, this knob here controls your stitch length, and it's that easy. So when I'm usually sewing on quilting cotton, I'm at about a two and a half. When I'm sewing vinyl, I turn it down to three or three and a half millimeters. Can I zoom in there? Yes, please. And that is simply this easy. Look at that. I mean, nothing to remember. When I'm when I'm sewing. Backwards, I just lift this up and that reverse stitches. That's how easy it is, like so easy to remember. This 1008 also has a manual buttonhole. I don't use this super often, but I have probably used it 50 times or so. And all it means is you just have to manually cycle through the different steps when you're making your buttonhole. So you turn it and let the machine do the stitching, turn it, let the machine do the stitching, and then you're back to normal. Now, if you're gonna do buttonholes often, uh, that's great, this machine can do it. I would just have your manual out with you. What I love about Bernina is you can download all their PDF manuals online. If you lose your booklet, or if you buy a refurbished machine or a, a used machine on Marketplace, and it didn't come with the booklet, you can just download it to your computer. Okay, I use Guterman thread, all-purpose thread, all the time for everything, for bag making, for garment sewing, for applique, I use it all the time, and this machine loves it. I'm gonna show you how I thread this machine. I just simply put the spool on. I don't have any extra accoutrements that I have to place here. Thanks, Ramel. Let's get zoomed in there. I put the spool on, I bring it over, it goes around this metal thingamajig here, comes down, catch it on this metal thingamajig, come back up, I turn my wheel so that this is at the top and it catches in there, and then I come down here, I place it behind that little arm, that's really important, and then the needle is front to back, the needle hole. This does not have an automatic threader. So I have to, I lower my foot to make it a little easier and then just thread my thread through there. Sometimes now that I'm older, I have to like put my finger there so I can actually see the hole. Oh my gosh, I'm in a weird spot. I'm not gonna do that on camera right now, but usually it's not too bad to thread it. Now this machine, can you back up so that we can see the feet? This machine, or else maybe just down screen and zoom in. This foot is controlled with this lever in the back. And so this is up and the foot is down. This is up. So now to change the feet out, I just lift this leather, lever, <laughs> keep saying leather, and take it off, okay? And there is my sewing foot. What kind of foot is that? 
this one is a Teflon foot, and I have this on most of the time, I would say, because I really like sewing layers with this machine. Now, it does come with, at least mine did, about five different feet. And if you don't have the other feet, like a zipper foot and a walking foot, I would invest in those. Those are amazing tools that you need in your arsenal. Don't be afraid of them. So I also bought myself a quarter inch patchwork foot for this machine so that I don't have to measure seam allowances when I wanna piece quilt tops. And that patchwork foot, it really has saved me a lot of time. When I started quilting, I didn't understand that you really need that quarter inch seam allowance all the time and to be exact. So invest in those tools, they are awesome. I will also say, for what, 10, 12 years, I did all my quilting on this machine. Free motion quilting, straight line quilting, you name it. How many quilts did I make in England? Oof, I, I lost. Yeah, I bet, I bet 200, easy. Because I sold them, we had to do that to bring in some money. So I would quilt everything on this machine. And I'm gonna show you on this. Let me put the foot back on. Well, actually, no, I'm, see how the feed dogs are raised right now? With a flick of a switch, I can lower them. So right now they're up. If you're gonna free motion quilt, you do this knob, and now they're gone. This is smooth, they're gone, they're down. Yep, so I will have to, um, I turned it back on, but I have to actually press my lever, press my, pedal for them to come back up. See, now they're up. I'm gonna switch my knob. Now they're down. And that is how you free motion quilt. And so you're pushing your quilt around. It is physical, but you can absolutely quilt on this machine. I did buy an $80 extension table to give me more workspace, but I made that work for over a decade. And I'm telling you, it's all in your mind. You can do it. You can have these kind of machines do everything for you as long as you're willing to learn it and practice and don't expect perfection first time out of the gate. Let me make sure I'm telling you all the benefits of this machine. And I don't, I don't sell machines at all. So I have no reason to tell you this other than to save you some uh, Pain and heartache. heartache. Yeah. And money. <laughs> Save you some money. <laughs> uh, let's see. This has 17 stitches, but like I said, I mainly, 99% of the time, I'm using straight stitch. Uh, the needle positioning is very easy to do. So just with the turn of a dial, I can switch my needle from being in the middle to being over to the left or all the way over to the right. And when that comes in handy is, especially for zipper sewing, for sure, zipper sewing. And if you don't have a zipper foot, you can kind of cheat it by moving your needle. Um, another time is like garment sewing. Sometimes you want to get really close to an edge and that's hard to do consistently and beautifully unless you can move your needle. Let's see. Yes, did all those. I won't get too into shanks because it doesn't really matter if it's high shank or low shank unless you're using things like uh, acrylic free motion rulers. I don't use that, I just do my own. And when you go to buy your feet, you wanna make sure you know whether it's low shank or high shank. And it all depends on where that screw goes in on your machine and then the measurement to the bed of the machine. You don't need to know that. Just make sure you're buying your feet from your local sewing shop and you, sewing machine shop, <laughs> sewing shop, and you tell them your exact model. Take a picture, keep it on your phone, and then you always know what you have. Uh, let's see here, I was gonna say something else about that. Now I forgot. I have done both. Uh, in all transparency, I've bought machines online. I've bought them in person at local shops. 
I tend to think that it's best to buy from your local shop because they'll take the time with you and walk you through things. They can also support you in learning new tasks. They might have classes and a lot of them have repair, a repair person or people in their shop in case you need this machine repaired in the future or for tune-ups. You know, you do want to keep your machines cleaned and a lot of times it's just worth it to take it in, have it cleaned professionally and then bring it home. Okay, the better care you take of your machine, the better it's going to take care of you. It's just like a car. Got to change that oil. <laughs> Got to do all that. I will say on this machine, I do not have to oil it often. What I do is the bobbin, the metal bobbins. That's what I was going to talk about. The metal bobbins in the Bernina line work for all their machines. So this is their metal bobbin, except there's two lines these don't work in, but they're specialty. It's like the eight series and something else. But this works in the other machine I'm going to show you, my 350, are these metal bobbins. And so the only thing I oil on this machine is down here in the bobbin drive, the case. And then when I clean, I push in this little lever on the side and I pull all this out and I clean this with a brush and I oil it and then I make sure this is clean and then I put it all back in. You can kind of see some oil here. I did it recently. You don't need gobs of oil. It just needs a bit to keep everything running smoothly. Now I'm going to put that in so that I don't lose those parts. I keep all my sewing machine feet in a plastic case labeled for that machine. Um, because it's very easy to confuse them and to lose them. You don't want to do that. You want to have your stuff together when you need it. No shame if you've done that. I have too. I'm not judging anyone. I, I lose stuff all the time. So anywho, that's the 1008, okay? Some things I think you want to consider when you're shopping for a machine. My, my top six things. <laughs> ease of operation. With this machine, I literally was a new sewist and I had learned maybe two months earlier what a bobbin was. I could sit down at this machine and immediately begin. So ease of operation. Number two, what do you want to do? If you're going to sew layers, if you're going to make bags, voice that to your person that you're buying from because the machine has to be able to handle that. A lot of machines are marketed or meant for quilters and piecing, and that's not layers. That's, you know, one or two quilting cotton pieces, that's nothing. If you're going to sew faux leathers, vinyls, etc., and make bags and quilts and whatever, you want a machine that can handle it. Number three, uh, can you sit and test drive at your local shop? Ask. If they don't offer, ask. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm making an investment. I have to know this is going to work for me. Can I bring in my little zipper pouch and sew the sides and see how the stitches are or something like that? You know, I'm always a little bit embarrassed to do that, but it is worth it. You're spending a lot of money, so it's worth it. Ask. The worst they can say is no. Uh, number five, four, five, can you look up the PDF manual online first? Look through it. See if the way they explain threading is simple in your mind and then go in and do it. It's a good idea. If you're a prepared person, do that. I would never think of doing that. That's why I'm telling you to do it because I would never think of that. <laughs> um, next, stitch offerings. What do you think you're going to do the most? Do you really need 338 stitches? stitch options on your machine or are 17 okay? So, or even one. I'm going to show you a machine that only has one type of stitch and I use it all the time. All right. Okay, let's go to the Bernina 350. That is my electronic computerized machine. And this was a QuiltCon purchase because at the time cotton and steel was there 
and I love them. They're now Ruby Star Society. And that this is like a special edition. I got a great price, so I thought, why not? So this is my computerized machine. Let me plug it in. Do, 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 do. So on this machine, maybe we can back up a little bit. I use the same, it's the same bobbin case or drive or whatever you want to call it, the same type of bobbin. However, the feet, I cannot, a lot of them will not interchange with my 1008. Some will, the basic feet will, but there are some feet that are different. And one of the things that I love about this machine is the automatic buttonhole. My 1008 can do a buttonhole, but it's, I have to walk myself through it. This machine can just do an automatic buttonhole. So I set it up with the buttonhole foot, and then I press go, and it just does it. And, <laughs> and then it can remember. So this has a memory. It will do the same buttonhole, size, width, etc. you know, six, seven, eight times, whatever you need for your shirt. So that's really nice to have. That's an upgrade. It has the different stitches over here. And then this one has a speed control and you can make it really slow or you can make it really fast. The really fast is still not very fast for me. It's about 800 stitches or 900 stitches per minute. Whereas usually I like to sew about 1500 stitches per minute, but that's me, that's how I operate. That was kind of a must have situation when we were stationed in England. You don't have to sew fast to sew well. So I just wanted to touch on that. This I do use Guterman thread still all the time and it threads exactly like the other machine. Does that one have uh, an assist for threading? You know what? I don't know. It might, but I always manually thread it. I'm not sure. I should probably look that up because I'm going to start needing that. I think it does. You think it does? Yeah. I do know that the reverse on this one is a button here, and sometimes that trips me out. It's like slow to me, but that's okay. Needle up or down is here. The levers in the back are the same as the 1008, which I really like. So foot down, foot up, and the foot comes off the same way as the 1008. It's very easy to switch feet out on this 350. I did invest in a walking foot for this machine, which I love. I sometimes will do straight line quilting on this machine because it's just simp simple. It does have a very powerful DC motor. So I have sewn bags on this, even though it's not my first choice, it can handle it. Uh, let's see here. Memory function, metal bobbins, yes. Oh, this has a knee lift. There's a little hole here that I could put a knee lift in, and then you can do a hands-free operation. I don't use it. Um, I might eventually in the future, though. That might be a good idea to learn. I'll have to get out my manual. This manual is also online. Okay, so that's my Bernina 350. Now I'm going to show you my Juki. I'm going to unplug this so I don't trip over anything. Now this Juki is heavy. It's all metal. Actually, maybe this one it said made out of all, all, aluminum. That might be all metal. Yeah. Well, I looked it up, actually. The Juki is all metal. It says no plastic parts, literally. Okay. So if that's important to you... Ramel, don't contradict Juki. They'll come for you. They, yeah. they said no plastic parts online. So I'm going with it. Um, this one, I use this one probably the most for my bag making because it's very, very heavy and it can handle, I think, up to 20 layers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not industrial. Some people are calling this semi-industrial. That's not a thing. 
okay? It's not a semi-industrial, it's not. It's a home machine. I think maybe what is happening is it's called that because it's so heavy and it's just one stitch. It's just a straight stitch. But according to Juki, this is a domestic machine, not an industrial machine. Industrials, if you've ever seen them, they're really big a lot of times. They require usually a special table. And they have kind of a free arm a lot of times. You can look them up. Conso and Juki has lots of industrials and sale right their own oil supply they're like intense okay maybe when we build our own um building i'll get one yeah not yet though i'm not ready for i know myself i'm not ready to take on learning something else right now <laughs> okay so this is the juki tl 2000 qi and what i'll tell you is the the only thing that makes this different than the 2010 is speed control. So on the 2010, you have speed control. On this one, I technically there's no speed control, but me, I control it with my pressure of the pedal. So I love this thing. This can go 1,500 stitches per minute, and it has an automatic thread cutter on the pedal. So when you press, when you first get it, if you're not used to it, the pedal... A certain way you press it will automatically cut your threads. And that is super great when you're trying to sew a lot of stuff fast. You just, next, next. I love it. I absolutely love it. So like I said, this is just a straight stitch. It is not computerized in any way. It's all mechanical. Uh, no plastic parts. It says all aluminum, aluminum entirely. One thing that did mess me up for a while is their quilting foot, what they mark it as a quilting foot, is actually one-fifth of an inch, not one-fourth. So when I use the Juki, if I'm using it for piecing quilts, I have to use my metal seam guide on the bed of the machine. It's magnetic, and it keeps my seam allowance accurate because otherwise I would be sewing a fifth of an inch. And in quilt tops, that makes a big difference. You have to be precise if you want all your points to match up. And if you don't care, then disregard. <laughs> I'm all for that too. Um, threading is different on this machine, and I'm gonna walk you through this. You must, what I did is I printed out how to thread my machine on an eight and a half by 11, and I taped it up on my wall for the first few months of having this machine. I still use Guterman all-purpose thread. Now I hope I don't mess this up while I'm doing a demo. I'm going down through this hole. I'm going up. Now see, I'm getting nervous now. Down. Up, around, no. So down, up, through here, around the knob, under this lever, through here again, up and over, catch it in this arm, through here again, three times through this arm here. Down, catch it down here, and now it goes, oh, I gotta lift this, I'm running out of thread. It goes behind this little arm here, and then the needle on a Juki is sideways for this one, for this model. So when I thread it, I'm going from left to right. I'm gonna have to get in the way here for this part. There it is, no. Maybe I need more powerful glasses, there it is. So as you can see, the needle is sideways, so I'm, I'm threading left to right, and then I pull it down. And I always take it behind the foot like that. Pretty sure that one has a, an assist little arm where you can... Uh, no, I don't think so, Ramal. Right. You really think so? Well, I have never used it if there is one, or maybe I didn't get one. Prepare to be amazed. 
That's how I thread it. And as you can see, when I'm under pressure, I have to look at that uh, wall piece when I'm threading it because it's so different than these other machines. But once you get it, it's super simple and I love it. And that's cool too. You can, that's the cool thing about PDF manuals. You can make like a magnify it, print it, and just have that yeah. thing that you need to reference to. Totally. And you know what? I'm doubting myself all of a sudden. So uh, for sure, reference your manual. And you know what? If I threaded it wrong, I don't care. I'm just here to show you how different things are threaded. I think I threaded it right. Did I? We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, plenty of people will let me know if I didn't. But anyways, I thread it right when I'm at home, if I didn't here. What I do like about this machine is um, the dials. You know, this is, oops, you got to back up. I hardly ever change my tension on this machine. I don't, maybe once ever, and I've had it for about eight years. This is reverse, just pressing that down makes it super easy. Here is the stitch length. Usually I'm at a three. You can tell when I stopped sewing I was basting. So that's how big your stitches are. And up here is the tension knob, up here. How about the one right in front of you? Um, you know what? I don't remember what this one is. I'll have to look at. I thought that was the tension. It ties directly to it. Well, this is the tension lever. Okay. Or the window. No, this, I don't know, Ramel. I don't mess with this ever. Okay. See, another reason I should have my manual out. But this is not a tutorial on how the machine works. Go to your shop for that. <laughs> This is just telling you about the three machines I use and why I use them. Okay. Let me check. Is that everything? What, do you have any questions, Ramel, that I can answer? <laughs> because I sew all the time. Well, maybe you're interested in sewing. Hmm. What would you pick as your entry machine, do you think? Well, I, I do agree with uh, ease of use. Yeah, right? That's key. And you're a computer person. Yeah. So that kind of surprises me. I would have thought you would want like all the stitch options. Well, I, I do like options and just because, um, well, I don't, I'm not mic'd up here, but. Oh, well, what are you talking for then? We can't have that in the video if you're not mic'd up. Well, what are we, I would say is um, I do like options except I like having something and not need it than needing it and not having it. So options, it's kind of hard to think into the future about what you would need. But um, if, if there was a price difference between 10 options versus 20, then I, I would choose ease of use over options. Yeah, I would too every time. So I don't know current price options on these machines, but I'm all for a refurbished machine, uh, a gifted machine. A lot of times those set 1970s Kenmores, those are amazing. And I see those in thrift shops sometimes. Uh, if I had more space, I might pick them up every time. But those heavy duty older machines are amazing. So don't think you have to break the bank on this. Uh, a lot of times also these local shops will have uh, financing options or payment plans, that kind of thing. So instead of thinking of it as, I was going to say a delicacy, that's, uh, what, what's another synonym for that? Like a, this is an investment in you. This is a skill building machine for you to grow. So you're worth it. You're worth this investment. And I it's know, not a treat. yeah, it's not like some, you know, fantastical treat out there. It's, it's, you need tools. You need tools that will work. You need tools that are simple to operate, that will deliver a consistent, classic expert result, right? So these three that I talked about, 
I can vouch for because I use them and I have been using them for years and years. <sighs> so that's it. Yeah. I think that's it. Why, why do you have three? Why do I have three? Well, I had just the 1008 for about 10 years. That was, it was the only machine I had. And then I actually took a workshop with Victoria Finley Wolf and she was using the Juki. I think she had the 2010 maybe at that time, but when I saw her sewing that fast, I was like, I need that. <laughs> and I went and got it immediately. I just couldn't wait. And then, like I said, the QuiltCon machine purchase with my friend Teresa, we went in and got one each so we could be twinsies. But what sold me on it was, I think it was half price at the convention and also that buttonhole. I was deathly afraid, not deathly afraid, but buttonholes were kind of this, mm, I don't love them thing, until I got a tool that could help me execute a great result every time that was consistent. So that's why I have those three. And at home, I, I always have my 1008 and my Juki hooked up, and then I'll unplug my 350 with my serger and kind of switch those out. But, you know, that's also in the warmer weather. I'm on the back porch, I can do that. When it's winter time and I have to move back into the house, I just have one machine set up on my dining room table, to be honest. It's not ideal, but I make it work. I'm not concerned with what visitors think and if they pop up and just pop over, like, prepare to see how my house is. It's a working house, it's not a museum. And I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable. A showroom. It's not a showroom, honey. This house gets used, okay? <laughs> That's what it's there for. So, all right. If you have questions, I will try to answer them. I don't know everything about different kinds of models of machines. I would suggest you go into your local shop and talk with them about it. I, I advise not buying a machine from a big box store because most of the time those are super, super entry level. They don't have any oomph, the motor is not quality, they're plastic, and you're not gonna get support from a big box store. You're just not, they don't have the staff. <laughs> so visit your local quilt shop and uh, get going on it, you're worth it. I'll see you soon.